Hello friends, DK this side. I hope you people are riding the stock market trend. The US stock market is extremely bullish. However, there has been some setback during the last trading session of the last week, where there was a substantial fall in the market. So are you worried about that fall? What that fall was abnormal? Absolutely not, friend. When the market rises parabolically on upside, the market gets overextended. Market goes into the overbought territory. And we can always expect a correction because the market from time to time in the markup phase always follows the mean reversion path. And that exactly has happened in the US stock. In fact, if you see, Dow Jones Industrial Average Index in the last week had fallen by nearly 1%, which was the probably the highest fall in a single week since October last year. Such things are very common in the stock market where the impulsive wave gets formed due to parabolic rise and then correction takes place and which is ultimately becomes the corrective wave after the retracement is over or correction is over, market resumes a trend. So in this video, we will undertake the technical analysis of S&P 500, NASDAQ 100 and Dow Jones Industrial Average Index to determine the support and resistance area. We'll understand the price action. I'll try to explain you the price action so that if you are a beginner in the stock market, you slowly start learning all about the technical analysis of the market. However, we have a complete course or tutorial series called Zero to Hero on this channel. You can refer to the podcast of this channel and start learning technical analysis in a structured fashion starting from Zero to Hero one onward. Friends, do not forget to like this video, subscribe the channel, hit the notification bell for updates. Let's begin. So in the last week, S&P 500 had fallen by 0.26%. So it was not a very major fall in S&P 500, which is a broader market index. However, NASDAQ 100 had fallen by 1.55%. And the culprit is NVIDIA stock. In fact, NVIDIA stock had risen parabolically on upside with multiple gaps formation. And probably it was a stock, a major stock in NASDAQ 100, which was in the overbought territory. It was price was too much overextended. So correction was uh, bound to take place in the stock, which has risen parabolically high. And that has exactly happened in the last week, which affected the NASDAQ 100. And it had fallen by 1.55% on a week to week basis. Look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index. This index has also fallen by 0.93% on a week to week basis. Now let us check the market sentiments that had driven the US stock market in the last week. This is the fear and greed index with respect to broader market index S&P 500. Currently it reads at post closing of the week at 71, which means it is in a greed zone. One week ago, it was there in the uh, extreme greed zone and it was reading 78. So market sentiment has little deteriorated from 78 to 71, but still the investors are greedy in the US stock market. Now we will check the market's momentum with respect to S&P 500. It is always useful to look at the stock market levels and compare to where they have been over the past few months. When S&P 500 index is above the moving average for the period 125, this is the period 125, 
the moment market momentum is considered to be good we can see s p 500 is far on upside with respect to the simple moving average 125 so even this indicator is indicating that the market is in extreme greed zone now let us check the put call ratio we call it pcr so we'll check the put call ratio of five day average uh, with respect to s p 500 now currently it reads at around let me check the value it reads at around 0.72 so options are the contracts that give the investors the right to buy or sell stocks or index and uh, puts are the options to sell while calls are the option to buy that we all know so this ratio is very important that reflects the market sentiments so 0.72 put call ratio indicates that the market is in a extreme greed zone let us have a look towards the market volatility the most well known major of the market sentiment is volatility index we call it vix so if you look here and compare with the 50 day moving average so it is slightly above the 50 day moving average so in fact it is oscillating in and around the 50 day moving average so as per this indicator the volatility is not very high in the us stock market i'm talking about s p 500 so this index indicate that probably it is in a neutral zone let us now start the technical analysis of s p 500 index this is the weekly price chart the index in the last week finally closed at 5123.68 so marginally it was lower by 0.26 percent but look at the price action this was the all-time high it has made in january 2022 and then it was a beautiful rounding pattern and it gave a breakout over here so it is a it is trading almost at all-time high now now the question here is this is a very very important price action which is a rounding bottom pattern which is a reliable chart pattern now look at this impulse it's a parabolic rise in s p 500 hardly any correction there was a minor correction here and then minor correction here and now in the last week there is a formation of a spinning top indicating the indecisiveness in the market now if i superimpose some of the technical studies what we can see we have already talked about the breakout of a rounding pattern earlier all-time high was in january 2022 year which was 4880 so 4800 becomes the very very strong base in s p 500 that does not mean that i am suggesting that it may fall to 4800 because there is a rising price channel it was trading in a rising price channel and price has given a breakout of the upper fiber of this rising price channel so in any case upper fiber of the rising price channel will act as a very good support now coming back to the further price action if we calculate the target based on this rounding pattern breakout the next possible move of s p 500 could be to 5743 so there is a still upside move or cushion available in s p 500 index now let us look at the price action closely if you look at the price action let me enlarge a chart a little bit so that i can explain properly look at here this was the area where the price has struggled to go past so this becomes the earlier resistance should act as a support so 5048 level is a good support area in this index now let us go to the daily price chart what we can see during the last trading session there is a sudden fall in the market during the last trading session itself the s p 500 fell by 0.65 and there is a formation of a bearish engulfing 
candlestick pattern over here. So it's a weakness in the market suggested by the candlestick pattern. But if we look at the price action, this is the rising trend line. Price has taken support here, has taken support here, support, support and support. So this trend line is an established trend line uh, indicating the dynamic support in S&P 500 index. So if you look at the price action, this was the area of resistance price consolidated here and then this was the area of resistance. So 5077 to 5100 is the intervening support. But the major support exists at 5048 because the price got rejected over here and there is an intervention of EMA 21. Even if the mean revision takes place, price is likely to take support at EMA 21. But if the price gives a breakdown of this trend line, which is up till now acting as a dynamic support, then there can be a deeper, little deeper correction. It gives a breakdown but recovers, then the possibility is not there. But if it gives a breakdown and there is a follow through of the low of that breakdown candle, then there is an existence of a gap. This window is likely to be filled in because it is not yet filled as a proof. So, considering this gap, I consider the major support of S&P 500 at 4,983 where there is an existence of a gap. At the same time, it is the confluence of the upper fiber of the rising price channel that we discussed in the weekly price chart. So, what we conclude? Intermittent support exists at 5,077 to 5,100. Then another support is 5,048. And then finally, if it gives a breakdown of 5,048, we might see a possibility of going it to 4,983. And this gap will act as a good support in S&P 500. What is the potential upside? Immediate resistance now gets created at 5144. Why? Because this is a bearish engulfing candle. If you calculate the median of this candle, then it comes at 5144.45. And there is a price rejection over here. So this area is likely to act as a resistance. However, once the correction is over and trend resumes, let us see the last impulsive wave and project the target. Why this correction is taking place, let us understand. With respect to the prior impulsive wave, and this was a breakout of a bullish flag, so the price has attained the first target of 127.2% expansion level and then this correction is taking place. So once this correction is over and the original trend resumes, the next possible target could be to 5,225 in S&P 500, which is nothing but the 161.8% expansion level with respect to the prior impulsive wave. So overall structure is looking good. Short term trend, intermediate trend, long term trend, all are bullish in S&P 500. Now let us move to NASDAQ 100. This is the price chart of NASDAQ 100 index in weekly time frame. This index in the last week closed at 18,018.45 but had fallen by 1.55% on a week to week basis. Here too, it is trading at all time high, almost at all time high. This was the earlier high it has made in November 2021 and if I draw a horizontal line, it has already given a breakout of this rounding pattern. So overall trend is bullish. But when we look at the last week's candle, last week's candle is nothing but the uh, bearish piercing candle kind of candlestick pattern. But if you look at the price action, this was the area of resistance and this was the area of consolidation. So this area is likely to act as a good support. So I don't see major correction uh, in uh, uh, major correction upcoming in NASDAQ 100. Let me superimpose some of the drawings. Earlier we talked about the breakout of this rounding pattern. Earlier all time high was 16,764.86 in November 2021. 
So if I calculate the target on the basis of this rounding pattern, the first target comes at 21,828. So still NASDAQ has to go upside. However, the correction is the part of the strong uh, trending market where the mean reversion takes place. And if you look at the further price action, this was the area of resistance, resistance, resistance and support, support, support. So this was a breakout of a rising wedge indicating the expansion in the price. Now coming back to the price action. As I said, there is a area of resistance here. So 17,850 becomes a good support in NASDAQ. And there is an existence of a gap which I'll explain you when we go to the daily chart at 17,482. So what we can conclude that 17,482 to 17,850 is a major demand area in NASDAQ 100. Now let us go to the daily price chart. What we can see during the last trading session of the last week, there is a formation of a bearish engulfing candlestick pattern. So considering the price rejection here, price rejection here, immediate resistance is now at 18,300 level. As I said, this was the area of consolidation. Price has taken resistance here too. So 17,850 is a good support. And this trend line, which is a rising trend line, let me explain you. Price has taken support here, support here, support here. So this trend line is currently acting as a dynamic support with a confluence of EMA 21 and volume weighted moving average. So I still see the NASDAQ might take support at 17,850. Currently it trades at 18,018. So some more correction is possible. And if it breaks down below this trend line, then there is an existence of a gap here. This gap was created in uh, recent time in on 22nd of February and this gap is finally if at all is to be filled then probably it may fall to 17,400 to 17,482 which has a confluence of this EMA 55 and it is a confluence of the rising wedge upper fiber of the rising wedge so this area becomes the strong support area it is very difficult for any analyst to tell whether the correction would be shallow or could be deeper. But considering the market structure, even if the price corrects to 17,400 level, I won't say it is a very major kind of correction because the market structure is higher highs and higher lows. Unless the price gives a breakdown below this important level, the market structure will remain intact. So I don't see a very big correction forthcoming in NASDAQ 100. Now, why this correction is taking place? So, if I take the reference of the last impulsive wave and project the target, what has happened with respect to this impulsive wave? It has already attained the target of 127.2% expansion level and hence the price got overextended. It was away from the short term moving averages. So, correction was to take place and which is taking place. So, once the correction is over, and the trend resumption takes place, the next possible move of NASDAQ 100 in the short term would be to 18,700, which is nothing but 161.8% expansion level with respect to prior impulsive wave. Or could be to 19,000 even, because if we take the reference of this impulsive wave, the target would be still higher. Now let us go to the price chart of Dow Jones Industrial Average Index to undertake the technical analysis. This is the price chart of Dow Jones Industrial Average Index in weekly time frame. This index in the last week closed at 38,722.7 thereby it was bearish by 0.93%. So this was the biggest single week fall in Dow Jones Industrial Average Index after October 2023 which means after this biggest fall, the structure is very, very strong impulsive wave. Now coming back to the price action, this index made an all-time high here earlier 
in January 22 at 36,952. So here too, there is a breakout of a rounding pattern. If you calculate the target based on this rounding pattern, the next possible move comes at 41,900 or maybe 42,000. Look at the recent price action in the weekly price chart. What we can see, it's a nearly a formation of an evening star. Can we see? This candle was a small body candle and then there is a gap down opening and the price has gone downside. And earlier we talked about this as a demand area because 38,618, there is an existence of a gap or window in the daily price chart. So we'll go to the daily price chart to find out this uh, important price action. Look at this trend line. Price has taken support, taken support, taken support, taken support. If you look at closely the last three days price action, it's a kind of inside by kind of a structure which is coming indicating the loss of downside moment. So there is an existence of a gap. This gap was created. Now price has filled the gap already. So after filling the gap, price is taking support in this area. So I still believe that 38,400 to 38,600 is a good support. Unless the price gives a breakdown below 38,400, I don't see deeper correction in this index. Now, why this correction is taking place? If you can understand the rhythm of the price action, let us look at the last impulsive day and project the target. What has happened? This is the last well-defined impulsive day. If you project the target using the Fibonacci expansion tool, first target got achieved over here, which was 127.2% expansion level and hence correction is taking place. So once the correction is over and trend resumes, then the next possible move could be to 39,550 level, which is nothing but the 161.8% expansion level. So overall trend is looking, you will appreciate then when we participate in the stock market, knowing the price action is extremely important. That gives us the confidence to participate in the stock market because we are aware of the support and resistance levels based on the price action. And this weekly analysis video is an attempt of this channel in that direction. In addition to this, we come twice live on this channel every Monday and every Thursday at 9 p.m. Indian Standard Time. So some of the people in different countries might be having difficulties to participate in the live streaming session because of the timing. But you can always find the support and resistance level of the all major stock market indices all over the world. You can watch it later when the live stream is over. So always try to watch these two live streaming sessions on market pulse and weekly stock market analysis on this channel in addition if you are learning uh, all about the technical analysis and price action analysis there is a separate podcast on the channel visit the podcast once find the tutorial videos on those podcasts which will help you to learn from the comfort of your home Thank you very much for watching. Looking forward for your comments in the comment section of this video.